Well then there, today I'd like to share with you another proven idea from Persuasion in Print. This is an idea that really can increase engagement and also give you some fascinating marketing stats and information. Hello there, my name is Peter Thompson. I'm the UK's most prolific information product creator. And over the last 27 years since I semi-retired, having sold my business, I've been helping coaches, consultants, speakers and trainers and small business owners, people like me and you, to build for themselves a business and a life of choice. Isn't that a great idea? So today's idea is this. This is a little technique that can be used, it comes from direct mail, but we can use it in our emails, we can use it on web pages, we can even use it on videos. And I'm also going to link it back to an old TV show right at the end of this and tell you a very special part that most people don't consider when it comes to this idea. So the idea for today is this, it's the PS or the postscript. Think of a standard piece of direct mail or communication and what have we got? We've got a pre-head identifying the audience or the reader. We've got a headline, we've got a subhead, and then we've got the body copy where we talk about the features and benefits and advantages that somebody gets. Maybe there's some testimonials and various other bits of bonuses and information. And then right at the end, there's a sign off. There's a call to action, obviously. There's a signature. And then there's the title of the person. And then there's a PS, the postscript. Or when I'm teaching copywriting, I say to people, what does PS stand for? And everybody says postscript, I say no. Peter said, because we must always put the postscript in. Why? Well, if you think back to the days of bulk direct mail, where we got lots and lots of it, the really good direct mail did not have the title of the company or the writer at the top of the first page. No, it had the pre-head, a powerful headline, a subhead, and all of those were designed to get the reader to read the body copy. The information about the author of the piece was at the end of the letter, not at the start of the letter, unless they were particularly well known to the people they were writing to. So what does somebody do? And the studies have proven this, by the way. They'd read the pre-head, the headline, the subhead, and start to read the body copy. And then having started, they'd have a quick look at the end of the letter to see who it was from. And whilst they were there, they would read the PS. So what should the PS contain? Well, it needs to be a summary of the key benefits and advantages and reasons to take action that we've talked about in the main body copy. It also needs to state the call to action again and again in a minute or two I'll tell you a, a different part about that that is really powerful especially for marketing stats and conversion by the way so that's what the PS is supposed to be doing it's supposed to be reiterating the benefits the advantages and the call to action now what about this special bit that we can use well it's this if you're sending emails uh, which I'm sure you are these days with your marketing then what we can do is when we state the first call to action in the email, which may be about a third to two thirds of the way through the email copy, what we can do with the call to action in the PS is to change the words. We can also tag both of these calls to action, and you may even have a third in there, and we can measure which ones are producing the results. So is it the first time that we have the call to action which says, click here to get your whatever it might be, or is it the second one that says, click here, don't miss out? Or is it the third one that says, click here to get this extra bonus of dot, dot, dot? You see, by having the call to action in the PS, it's an ideal opportunity to capture the interest of those people who are skim readers. And another one of these videos will talk about subheads and transitional copy. But for the moment, let's just think then the layout of our communication, our persuasion in print, regardless whether it's an email or a web page, whatever it might be, or even a video, is going to be a pre-header headline, a subhead, the body copy, with some calls to action, and then in the PS, a reiteration of the key benefits and a fresh call to action that will enable us to measure the effect of different words, different bonuses, and different ideas. Oh, by the way, the bit that I forgot to mention was the old TV show, Columbo. Don't know if you remember that, if you're old enough to remember that. That was played by Peter Falk, Inspector Columbo, the scruffy detective who was a genius. And what he did when he was interviewing suspects, when he finished apparently with the questioning, he'd head towards the door off on his way back to the station. And just as he was going through the door, he'd pause, turn round, and ask the powerful question. That was his PS. Maybe you can add these into all of the communications that you do. Now, if you've got any questions on this or any comments, then by all means put them down there and we'll start a dialogue. And in the meantime, I wish you every success with your persuasion in print and all your adventures in life as you have freedom from anything that may have held you back. 
and freedom to be, do and have whatever you set your heart and mind upon. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye for now.